Welcome everybody, namaste. Welcome to this uh, chair yoga practice. Today is our first chair practice of 2021, a year with great potential. But right now things are a little bit uh, uh, unsure. Our future is a little bit unsure at the moment with uh, the prospect, we're all in lockdown here in Scotland, the prospect of this being extended for some time. So I decided that this term we would concentrate on cultivating a positive mindset and help to ease some of that uh, perhaps anxiety and that, that tendency to focus on the negative as our news reports often do. So before we get started with today's class, just want to read to you some things that I have been doing uh, from my notes. So uh, we cultivate a positive mindset because it's better for us. It not only improves our mood, but it improves our um, mental resilience and our physical resilience too. So we're better able to adapt to change, particularly swift change. Um, and we also uh, have improved immune function, which is great in the year of COVID. Um, and we have things like, uh, there is research that says you're much less likely to suffer heart attacks and strokes and even some forms of cancer if you have a positive attitude to life in general. Um, so it, it helps us, it improves our humor, our coping mechanisms. And in terms of our prana, our energy, the energy we work with in yoga, it fills us with light. And that light shines out of us even though we can't see it. Other people who are filled with light are attracted to it as well. So if we develop a positive attitude, then we find that we attract others with a similar attitude. And that becomes uh, like a, a exponential growth of wonderful positivity um, and then it's awesome. It's awesome. There we are. So I would like you to think a little bit this week about what positivity means to you. And can you think of somebody who does have a really positive attitude, a positive mindset, and perhaps how it feels to be around them? Um, perhaps if you think that that rubs off a little bit on you by osmosis or by the infectiousness of a smile or a little joke or a giggle or something like this. And can you come up with any strategies for bringing more positivity into your life? So yoga, doing yoga is uh, the number one that I would suggest. So you all get a massive tick and a golden smiley face in your uh, internal jotters uh, for just choosing to do yoga today, because that is one of the best things that you can do. But what else could you do? Come up with some strategies for yourself and also note what you already do. So things that you already know of that you take time to put into your life. So this week, we're going to focus on giving and receiving. Right now, it's very easy to find yourself giving a lot. So you're uh, perhaps spending a lot of time phoning people, making sure people are all right, uh, doing things for others around you, giving your energy to friends in need or giving your energy to media. So to social media or to watching the news or anything that is taking energy but not replenishing energy. So we want to balance that with a little bit of receiving. And today our yoga practice will be focused on self-nurturing, self-care, a little bit of self-love, a bit of yoga pampering um, so that we can address that imbalance and give back to ourselves, receive some of this energy. Okay, so without further ado, I shall pop the notes to one side and we will get cracking. So we're going to start sitting on our chairs and just take a moment to bring ourselves into the yoga space. Let all of that information I've just given you mull around for a few moments as we breathe. So sitting tall, finding a comfortable place to rest your hands, closing your eyes if you feel comfortable to do that, and perhaps gazing gently downward if you are developing comfort in that area.
Take a moment to notice how you're feeling, how your body phys physically feels, what sensations you can feel, sensations of comfort and ease, of space, mobility, elasticity, sensations of stiffness, stuckness, tension or discomfort. Particularly pay attention to any areas that might need just a little bit of extra care today to work around or to work with. Notice how you feel in yourself. It might be different now from when you first arrived in class. Notice your emotions. We're just observing. We don't need to get into the whys and wherefores. Notice if your mind is a little bit active today or if it's quite quiet. Often the advantage of yoga is that your mind becomes trained to become quieter as soon as you bring yourself into your yoga space. Notice your breath. Notice the breath that is there, your spontaneous breath. Then gently begin to deepen your breath. As you breathe in, breathe in really fully, expanding the chest, the rib cage. And as you breathe out, gently engaging your abdominal muscles, drawing slightly in at the end of your breath to make that purposeful, fuller exhalation. Breathing deeply into the sides, the back, the chest. Breathing slowly out, engaging your navel, pressing just a little bit more air out of the lungs. Breathing deeply into the sides, the back, the chest. Breathing slowly out, fully out, engaging your navel. Let's do a few more of these. And perhaps try softening the features of your face, relaxing the area around your eyes, your tongue and your jaw. And then at the end of your next exhalation, just blinking your eyes open, taking a moment to wiggle anything that needs to be wiggled. Okay, so we're going to start today with Kati Chakrasana standing on our feet and that's just to get us a little bit of movement before we do a little bit of self-massage. So come to standing and stepping your feet a comfortable distance apart. It can be wide if you prefer or less wide if you prefer. So soften the knees and begin with gently twisting from side to side. We're not trying to get anywhere in particular. We're just bringing a little bit of movement to the sides, the front and the back of the body. If it doesn't feel so comfortable doing this with your feet still, you can begin to pivot on your toes from the get go. But if you are happy to, you can keep your feet still for now. Let's allow our heads to follow our movement and the shoulders to be nice and relaxed, the arms soft, loose, heavy. You may need a little touch of gentle engagement across the abdominal muscles just to feel that stability, that sense of center. When you're ready, you can begin to pivot on your toes. You feel that twist, 
that motion, that movement coming into the legs and the hips a little bit more, even into the feet and the ankles. Perhaps you'd like to swing your arms a little bit more freely, touching your opposite shoulder in front, your opposite hip behind. Then if you want to, and only if you want to, you can add a gentle bend of the knees in the center. A bend and twist or a dip and twist. And then if you're dipping, we're going to lose the dip, keep the pivot. And then if you're pivoting, we're going to lose the pivot, bring the feet to stillness and then allow the body to lose its momentum slowly to come back to standing steady. When we're standing steady, drawing yourself up to your full height, letting your shoulders relax, closing your eyes if you feel able to. Just take a moment to notice the difference between movement and stillness. Notice the sensations in your fingertips, in your, on your skin, in your body, in your center. Then when you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back to sitting. So now that we've just wriggled things and stirred up our energy a little bit, we're going to do a, a little releasing for our jaw and our neck and our shoulders. So this is where we, uh, not everybody, but lots of us hold tension across the jaw. And you may notice that particularly when you're worried or anxious or angry, you grit your teeth and this, these muscles here can become a little bit sore. So we're gonna take our first two fingers, uh, first finger and middle finger and put them just underneath the cheekbones. And if you rub them slightly side to side, we're not pressing hard, just a little bit side to side and up and down, you might notice that there's a band of muscle just comes down the side of the face between the cheekbone and the jaw. So we're looking for that band of muscle. If you open and close your mouth or wiggle your jaw from side to side, you'll feel it moving underneath your fingertips. So then moving your fingertips right up just underneath the, the cheekbones themselves, we're going to press gently in. And then pressing gently in, open your mouth slowly. And then close your mouth. Take your fingers down a little bit to the spot underneath, press gently in. Then open your mouth slowly. And close your mouth slowly. I can't do that and talk at the same time. <laughs> you know what I mean. And then maybe take them just down a little bit more. Press gently in. Open your mouth slowly. And closing slowly as well. And you might have room for one more. You might not. But if you do, pressing gently in and opening your mouth slowly. And closing slowly too. And then gently releasing the fingers, just letting your hands relax and make some circles with your jaw. So your lower jaw. Mm. Both ways. Mm. You don't need to do any sound effects, but you can if you want to. And then rest. So hopefully that feels like you've been able to release some tension from that. Might not be all of it. You might need to do it a few times during the week to have the full effect. Now we're going to take our fingers and start just here underneath the ear and between the sort of bottom of the ear and the jaw is the start of the muscle that runs all the way down across the side of the neck into the front of the chest, into the collarbones. So it's called the sternocleidomastoid muscle. It's the one that if you make your uh, muscles stick out here in your neck, it's the one that you can see the most of. 
So we're going to start gently, gentle circles. We don't want to press too hard, especially just underneath the ear. But as we come into the body of that muscle, we're going to come down just slightly in front of the side of the neck. Doing nice, round, circular rubbing. And if you notice your, <clears throat> excuse me, if you notice your skin is a little bit dry, you can use the, the knuckles of the hand, just go a little bit more gently instead of the fingertips, or you can use some lotion, which is really useful too. So we're, we're aiming to come down here to where the collarbones are. And so where the neck joins underneath, inside the collarbones, at the, behind the collarbones even, um, we can maybe access that little space there. Sometimes it can be a little bit grainy feeling, just with some nice circular motions. And then across in front of the collarbones as well. So over the collarbones, just underneath the collarbones too. Hopefully that feels nice. And this is the way we want to do it. We want to start at the top and work down because this is the way our lymphatic system drains and the lymph nodes that it drains into are just behind the collarbones there. So if you want to, you can give yourself a, a few gentle uh, drawing down actions from the ears down the front side of the neck, side front of the neck, I don't know, towards the collarbones. And then we're gonna do the same thing, but behind the side of the neck. So from behind the ear, want to find that muscle that runs down just behind the side of the neck. We're going to start behind the ear a little and just make those circular motions. Gentle, not too hard. You don't want to press on the carotid artery or anything like that. Just want to do some gentle massaging. So we're creating a little warmth, a little stimulation, a little release. And we come into those more bunchy, larger muscles at the top of the back. And here, perhaps giving ourselves a little bit of a, a, a more, more fingers involved in the massage. So a little bit more of a rub. And of course, if this, if you have someone at home and uh, you can't reach all of these spaces, then you could ask them to help and you could offer to do one for them as well. A little bit of giving and receiving in the same practice. But at the moment, we can't get out for a massage, so we'll have to do it ourselves. There we are. And then when you've done, you feel that you've done enough, it feels like you're releasing and warming, just allowing your arms to rest for a moment. And take a moment here to observe how your neck feels in its movement. So we're gently going to turn the head from one side to the other. We're still sitting nice and lifted, nice and tall, but without tension in the shoulders. And we're not looking to do a particular movement. So we're just observing how it feels to move. We're not trying to get into a twist. And then in the center, you can drop your chin towards your chest. And if it feels comfortable, you could lift your chin a little towards the ceiling. And then chin to chest. And chin up. One more time. And then in the center, perhaps just a gentle ear to shoulder on both sides. Oh, once to either side, once or twice to either side. Taking just that attitude of observation. How does it feel? And coming back to center. Brilliant. So this one is completely optional as are all of the practices, but uh, we're going to do a practice here where we cup our hands a little bit and we're going to take them to the back of our neck. So one hand will be underneath the back of the head, just underneath the base of the skull. And one hand will be over that protrusion that happens at the bottom of the neck and the top of the back, that spinous process. And we're simply going to move the hands across and uh, sideways, backwards and forwards, so towards each other and apart. 
And with this gentle cupping, not pressing hard, just going gently. It's not a deep tissue massage, more is not better. If you feel comfortable, you can swap your hands around so you've got the opposite one on top. And you can move your head a little if you want to, if that feels okay. And then when you're ready, just releasing down. And again, taking a moment, perhaps this time, wiggling the jaw from side to side. Noticing how it feels, making some small movements with your neck. Feels lovely and warm, but sort of warm and cold at the same time. Maybe that's my hands. And then we'll move into some shoulder rolls. So here we're going to just begin with a little bit of a small movement, a little bit of rolling of the shoulders. You can do both shoulders at the same time. You can do them individually if you prefer. And we're going the opposite direction as well. That feels really nice. Now we've released the neck, it feels maybe a little bit more free. And then we're going to do uh, the same thing, but with our elbows nice and soft. So you can, I prefer to do this one at a time, but you can do it both at the same time if you like. So just rolling through the shoulder, a little bit more of expansive movement. You might find that you are moving your chest and your sides a little bit more in your torso and allow your head to go wherever it feels comfortable to go. So you don't have to move it, but if it moves naturally, then that's great. Go in both directions. I've got one clunky shoulder and one clunky direction. <laughs> so if you do feel it's a bit clunky or a bit popping, try not to press through that, but move around it if you can. Very good. And then we're going to take our fingertips towards our shoulders for some more pronounced shoulder circles. So we're breathing in as we bring the elbows together and up, and then breathing out as we draw the shoulder blades back and down. Breathing in forwards and up, breathing out back and down. Again, allowing the head to move, breathing in, breathing out. We'll do one more this way. Breathing in, breathing out. Let's reverse that motion. Breathe in, opening the chest, elbows come back and up. Breathing out, if you can, bringing the elbows towards each other and down. Breathing in, back and up. Breathing out, forward and down. Let your head be free to move, breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. Lovely job, relaxing the arms down to the sides. We'll take a moment to move our head and see how it's feeling. So sitting tall, just gently turning the head one, once or twice to each side. Once or twice with the chin down and the chin up. And once or twice, ear to shoulder, just taking care, not expecting, moving to where you're open to move to, no strain. Coming back to center. Okay, so we're going to do Golmokasana. I think probably for this one, I will take off my uh, cardigan. Um, and you might need your belt here. So what we'll do is we'll do uh, our, we'll, left hand behind us first um, and the right hand over the top and I'll talk you through it. So put your belt or whatever you're using for your device of length over your uh, left shoulder. <laughs> Forgive my lefts and rights, they never work. Okay, so I'm just turning sideways so you can see. I'm gonna take my left arm and place the back of the hand against my left hip and then slide my hand as far up my back as feels comfortable without strain. So I don't want to force the hand up. I don't want to 
jam my shoulder or create any tension in those areas where we've just released. And wherever I get to, I'm going to hold onto my belt. Now, it might be that you are able to get your hand a little bit higher up your back, but that's not the aim. The aim is just to uh, feel that sense of openness. This is my injured side, so it doesn't go, and I use a belt on this side. The other arm, so holding onto the belt, not under strain, should be nice and comfortable, comfortable-ish. The other arm, we're going to make some big circles with that elbow. And we're just going to allow the body to move a little bit with those circles. Maybe we're going both directions as well. So a little bit like what we were doing before. And then the next time that your right hand comes up and over, you're going to place the hand behind your head. So behind the back of the head, just above the neck and relax the head back into that hand. So the neck muscles will be able to relax a little. The head relaxes a bit back there. We've got both feet on the floor or on some sort of support. And we're just going to stir the body as if we were drawing a circle with our head on the ceiling. And then if it feels comfortable, you can go a little bit further forward a little bit further backwards, a little bit further to the, to the sides, but that's all depends on you, okay? So it doesn't matter which way you're going, just find it nice and comfortable. And then next time you come upright, we're going to try to join the two hands together. So I do this on the belt, and you might do this on the belt as well. Um, and then with our hands on the belt, we want our top elbow, instead of allowing it to flop forward, we want the top elbow to be reaching up, a little resistance, perhaps even pulling down a little bit with your belt. So you've got a little resistance. And then here, try not to overarch your chest forward. So you use a little bit of tummy muscle action, uh, length through the, the front of the body and the back of the body. So we're not arching. And we're gently just going to turn our head from side to side. And we're going to rest, turning to look over the shoulder of our left arm for a couple of deep breaths here. And then turning to look over the shoulder or under the shoulder of our right arm for a couple of deep breaths here. And then turning back to center, we're going to relax the hands away from the belt. The top arm's going to reach up and then reach all the way down to the side. The bottom hand's going to slide down the back, slide around our hip, and then we're going to roll our wrists and then make any movements with our arms or shoulders that feel good. Very good. Just releasing out. So if you need to give it a bit of a shake as well, a bit of a shake. So Gomukhasana, cow's face pose, this is the arms for it. It can feel uh, a little bit intense sometimes. So we want to ease into it. We want to work gently with it and use it to help to nurture, to, to release tension rather than to create tension. Let's move our belt to the opposite side and we can work with the opposite side now. So again, this time with our right hand, we're gonna slide the back of the right hand across the back of the hip and slide it up, up the body. So on this side, my hand reaches all the way up between my shoulder blades. Um, and that is great if that you manage it, but as you just saw, the other side doesn't do that. So just go to wherever feels good for you. It shouldn't feel like a strain. If you need the belt, the belt will be there. And then we're going to take our left arm and make those big circles. So 
What we're trying to do is create a little bit of movement underneath the shoulder blade there, a little bit of lubrication so that we've got space to move into. Let's go both ways. Nice and soft in the elbow. And it doesn't matter how far apart your hands are when you do this at all, as long as it's comfy. So next time your arm comes up, taking it to the space just underneath the, uh, just above the, the neck and the back of the head and relax your head into your hand. And then taking the weight of the head in the hand, allowing your body to make uh, circles. So if you remember which way you were circling last time, circling in the opposite direction. You can always circle in both directions. That's a good way to not have to remember which way you were going. If you want to, you can go a little bit deeper in your circles. Just check that you've got stability in your feet and in your abdominal muscles and that you're not going all in one direction. So making sure to go to the sides and the back as well as forwards. Next time you come up, we're going to join the hands together either on the belt or if you can, reaching the fingertips together. And then checking that that top elbow is not dropped forwards, it is lengthened upwards. Checking you haven't overarched in your uh, chest, so just drawing your belly muscles in a touch and lengthening the back of the body. And we're gently going to turn our head from one side to the other. Doesn't need to be a big movement. And then we're going to hold, looking over our right shoulder, just for a couple of deep breaths. Hold, looking towards our left shoulder for a couple of deep breaths. When you're ready, you can relax your hands away from the belt, reach the top arm up, just turn the palm and float that arm down, and then slide the bottom arm down the back and around the hips to release out. Ooh, probably feels like it, it doesn't really want to move, but it will. Gently bring some life back into those fingers, into the wrists wiggling the arms if you need to. Fantastic stuff. Oh, all good. Righty-ho, guys. So we can dispense with our belts. We can put them to one side. Uh, I think I think we're, we're done with them. And hopefully you feel uh, nice and opened, but we're going to check with our neck movements. So with their hands resting on their knees or their legs sitting tall, and just gently turning the head from side to side. We're not trying to go further, we're just exploring the ease with which the movement comes. Dropping the chin to the chest, lifting the chin up. Just a couple of times in each direction. For me, that now feels much better than it did. And finally, ear to shoulder, just gently Ear to shoulder. Very good. Awesome stuff. So I'm going to get you up from the seats now. We're going to do our, our chair-based cat pose. Um, so coming up to standing first, we're going to, I'm standing sideways so you can see, you don't need to stand sideways. So we're going to, to stand and we're going to place our hands onto our knees or our thighs rather, not our knees, our thighs, and then roll the shoulder blades towards each other to open the chest and look up. Imagine you're drawing your elbows slightly back behind you and then round through your spine. So scoop your belly in, drop your chin towards your chest, feel that length down the back of the body, draw the shoulder blades, uh, shoulders towards each other in front. Inhaling as you open, exhaling as you round, inhaling as you open, 
Exhaling as you round. Lovely stuff. Let's inhale back to standing and then do the same thing, but in our more bent over position for chair, uh, for cat rather. So on your chair with your hands as wide apart as your chair will allow. This is a great time to use a bench if you've got one. It gives you a little bit more space. We want our hands to be underneath our shoulders or slightly in front. If that's better for you, I know it's better for me. And feet about hip width, maybe just slightly wider apart. You can have your toes pointing out if that suits your back and knees better. Soft in the knees here. And we're inhaling, looking forward, opening the chest, lifting the tailbone maybe just slightly. And exhale, press through the hands to scoop the belly in and lift the body away from the floor, draw the chin towards the chest. Inhaling forward, opening the chest. Exhaling, rounding through the spine, tucking the chin in. Inhaling. And exhaling. Inhaling. This time, focus on squeezing the buttocks as you exhale, squeeze the buttocks under. Keep the buttocks squeezed gently as you inhale. And as you exhale again. And then from here, just walking yourself towards your seat. Use the back of the chair if you need to. Bring yourself standing upright. Take a moment to release the wrists if they uh, need a bit of releasing. And give yourself a moment along so that you feel that you're lengthened in that way. Awesome stuff. Righty-ho. So... We're now going to come to do our downward facing dog. And I don't know why I've shifted my chair, but I have. There we are. So coming to the back of your seat, we're going to step a little bit away from our seat and keep the knees nice and soft. Lengthen the tailbone back behind you at the same time as you allow the torso to come about parallel to the floor is what we're aiming for. But it doesn't matter if you're higher up than that. That's OK. And here we're going to pad through our knees. So we're going to lengthen one knee and then the other so that we swing our hips from side to side. Lengthen one knee and the other. Very good. And then as you do that, perhaps you feel that you can gently rock your head from side to side and your shoulders from side to side as well. A little bit of Tummy muscle control here. Just freeing up that movement. So the spine isn't static. We're creating that space, that lubrication, that length. Coming back to the center and then walking towards your seat. Standing tall, holding onto the back of your chair as long as you need to, to feel that you are steady, not feeling dizzy at all. It doesn't matter if you are feeling dizzy as long as you hold on until you don't. There we are. Fantastic stuff. OK, so here we're going to step the right foot backwards. We're not going to put the right foot off the floor today. We're going to keep the toes on the floor. So we've got the left foot forwards, the right foot backwards. We're going to raise the right arm up. And then if you want to, you can reach the right arm slightly back behind you. So you get a little bit of a stretch down the right side of the body. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Let's do one more. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. And gently lower the right arm. Bring the right leg back in. Let's do that with the left side as well. Step the left foot back, toes are on the floor. Raise the left arm up. And then if you want to, you can take your arm a little bit further back. It doesn't matter if that it doesn't happen automatically. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Lovely job, releasing the left hand down, the left leg. Very good. OK, so now I'm just going to step back to get a little bit more uh, space. We're going to come up onto our tiptoes. And then down onto our heels and bend the knees just a touch. So we're going to try and keep 
the rest of the body quite stable as we come up onto tiptoes, down onto heels and bend the knees. Up onto tiptoes, down onto heels, bend the knees. This time we're going to come up onto our tiptoes, keep the left hand on your seat, on your chair, and then raise the right arm up and twist to the right as you lower the right hand down behind you. And then we're going to come back away, raise the right arm back and up, twist to the front, lower the right hand down in front of you, heels to the floor, bend the knees. Same thing on the left hand side. Coming up onto tiptoes, raise the left hand up, nice action across your belly, twisting to the left, dropping that hand behind you, doesn't matter if the elbow is bent or straight, raising the left arm back and up, twisting to the front, lowering the left hand, heels to the floor, and bending the knees. You can do all of this with your feet flat on the floor, it's okay. Okay, one more time. Up onto tiptoes, raise the right hand up, reaching the hand back behind you, coming all the way back to center. Hand comes down, heels come down, bending the knees. Raising up onto your tiptoes, lifting the left arm up, twisting to the left, reaching back and down, Reaching back and up, twisting to the front, allowing the left hand to come down, the heels to come down, bending the knees. Excellent, well done guys. Okay, so we're going to step our right foot back a comfortable distance. So we've got a, a little, like, um, like a scissor. A scissor, I don't know what that means. You know what I mean. So one foot back, one foot forward. Left foot is the one that's forward. We can bring our chair a little bit closer towards us if you would like to for support. And all we're going to do is bend the front knee and then straighten the front knee. We don't need to go far. It's just a little bend, a little straighten. At the same time, we're going to focus on the back heel staying on the floor, back buttock working. Okay, so bending the front knee, straightening the front knee. This time, if you can, bend the front knee and hold. Otherwise, just keep going in and out and then raise the right arm up. Maybe lift your chest a little. Maybe even take the right arm back behind you a little. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. Raise the arm back up towards the front. Lengthen the front leg. Release the hands down. And then we're going to step back to do downward facing dog. So step back with your left foot, come into your downward facing dog. And here you can either shimmer your hips from side to side, or you can do a little bit of the paddling through the legs and twisting and turning through the torso. Or you can simply hold just with the knees nice and soft, not too, um, not too much focus on length in the backs of the legs. And then when you're ready, you can step forwards again, all the way to your chair, take a moment, make sure that you're feeling steady and stable. And then keeping your right foot forward, step your left foot back. So here, what we're doing is bending and straightening the front knee at the same time as we focus on the left heel being down, the left buttock working. So you can have that sense of, maybe almost tucking your pelvis under a little bit. Bending and straightening. Next time you have your right knee bent, if you want to, you can keep it bent. We're pressing down into that, that back heel, raising the left arm up. And if you want to, you can, and if you've got space, you can take that arm back behind you. Take a deep breath in, maybe lift your chest a little. Deep breath out, firm in the belly muscles. One more deep breath in. And deep breath out. Then we're going to raise that arm back towards the chair, lengthen through the front leg, step the right leg back to the left, maybe make a bit more space and come back into your downward facing dog. Little sway of the hips from side to side, 
little sway even maybe of the head from side to side. Whatever feels good for you. And then when you're ready, walking forward towards your seat, just holding on for as long as you need to, to feel that stability. And here endeth the movie bit of the class, the movie bit, the moving bit of the class, the dynamic part of the class. So we're going to come back to sitting on our seats. And if you've got a blanket or some uh, warm clothing close by, then now is the time to grab a hold of it. So it's, it's there, ready for relaxation. <clears throat> Super duper. And we've done an awful lot of opening of the body today. And we've done that because when we sit for uh, any length of time, <clears throat> we can become very closed in the front part of our body. So all of our opening of the chest is really good to balance out uh, that action of sitting forward and doing things forward, like reading, in my case, knitting, or using the iPhone, reading, watching TV, eating, all of these things are done in front of the body. So by using a little bit of a self-massage to release the tension and then muscle activation to begin to draw strength and create that stability and support behind the body so that we can open our chests and feel that lift of energy. It's all good. But just for a little bit of balance, we're going to do a stretch for the, the bits that we've worked. So let's begin by taking the arms wide. We're going to wrap the left arm across the body and then wrap the right arm in front of it. So the palms both face backwards. Um, and in fact, I should probably do this without my cardi on for, for being able to show. There we are, it's easier to see the arms. Um, and then here, you don't have to force the body into a stretch. What you're looking for is just that feeling of a little length, a little release, a little uh, softness here as well. So keeping the left shoulder nice and relaxed. And again, just gently turning the head from one side to the other. You can relax the hands and the fingers. You can take ears to shoulders. You can drop your chin to your chest and lift up. But just do things that feel comfortable, that feel useful. And then we're gently going to release the arms on this side. Take a moment. Maybe roll. Then same thing on the other side. So we're going to reach the right arm across the body, palm faces backwards, wrap the left arm in front of it just to ease the top of the arm towards your chest. Find some way to comfortably release the shoulders down. So we, we don't want to hold tension there uh, at all. And then gently turning the head. Just taking your time. Maybe then taking a moment ear to shoulder, ear to shoulder, and in the center, gently relaxing and releasing, rolling, shaking out the wrists if they need it as well. Okay, so now we have been thoroughly de-stressed, de anti-stressed, I don't know what the word is, uh, thoroughly released, there we are, that's the word. We're ready to do a little bit of relaxation. And for our relaxation, we're going to sit back into our seats. So for the active part of the class, we sit towards the front of the seat. For relaxation, we want the back of the body to be supported by the back of whatever you're sitting on. You can recline on a sofa, you can recline in bed if you prefer. If you are happy getting up and down from the floor, you can do relaxation on the floor as well. But I'm going to imagine that you're sitting in a chair as it's chair yoga. So resting your 
feet on something so the feet are flat i like to use a block so that my feet can be flat my knees can be soft um, without strain on the hips or the muscles of the thighs Resting the hands wherever is comfortable, palms up, palms down, doesn't matter. It can be arms down by the side if you really want. Taking a moment to close your eyes. Find your way to that place of stillness. Softening your effort. Feeling the weight of your body heavy into the floor surrendering down into the chair. Take a long, deep breath in and sigh as you exhale. <sighs> Repeat three more times, a long, deep breath in. Let all of your effort go. <sighs> A long deep breath in, feel your muscles relaxing. <sighs> Last deep breath in, surrender down into your chair, down into the floor. Allow your breath to find its natural rhythm, falling away into silence. Feel your forehead soften and relax. The area around your eyes releasing. Your mouth, tongue, jaw, relaxing. Allow the whole of the body to feel that sense of ease, of rest, letting go of tension. Bringing yourself to true comfort. Become aware of your breath. Just notice your spontaneous breath. Perhaps it feels just a touch easier than it did at the start of class. When you're ready, you can gently deepen your breath. Finding a long, slow, languid rhythm. Finding space in the lungs for an extra bit of prana as you breathe in. A greater sense of release as you breathe out. Take this moment to develop a sense of gratitude towards yourself. Saying a big mental thank you for giving yourself this time, this space, this ease of your energy. 
this opportunity to let go of tension, anxiety, stress. This opportunity to give something to yourself. Oh. Gently begin to deepen your breath. Bring your awareness back into your hands and your feet by moving your fingers, your toes, maybe rolling your feet at the ankles, rolling your hands at the wrists. When you feel ready, take a deep breath in and stretch, maybe yawning, <sighs> developing that sort of wriggle through the arms, through the legs, if you'd like to, through the sides of the body, perhaps. Then when you're ready, you can bring your hands together and rub them, rub the palms, pressing firmly, rubbing hard. Trying to get a little warmth into the palms of the hands, maybe rubbing a little quicker, maybe pressing a little harder. When they feel warm, placing the hands over the eyes so that the palms themselves don't touch the eyes, but create the absence of light. So you can blink into the palms of your hands without assaulting your eyes with a sudden brightness. And when you're ready, you can release your hands down as you open your eyes. Namaste, guys. Thank you for joining me for this practice. Thank you for giving yourself the time, energy, space. I look forward to seeing you over the coming weeks. More ways to cultivate that positive mindset. Namaste.